Many are the times that a customer will call you for repair work, especially if a socket is not working, be it in the dining room, in the TV room, that is denying them entertainment. This is your duty to go and troubleshoot and find out where the problem could be. Is it the socket that is faulty? When you go to the consumer unit and discover that an MCB has stripped, do you go and lift it up? No, 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 no. That is not the correct procedure. Today we are going to discuss about that and definitely sort out the problem that this customer is experiencing from a socket that is not functioning to an MCB that has stripped. We are going to find out the issue and definitely leave the customer happy and excited that the socket is once again working thank you so much for the likes you go to the consumer unit and uh, you find out what is the problem first of all you switch the main switch the dp at the consumer unit this one you switch it off that is the first process actually if you have this MCB that has stripped and you have visited the customer, my top boss. The first instinct should not be to turn this MCB on. The first instinct is to test for errors that led to the MCB tripping. Because behind the MCB tripping, there is a reason. There are several reasons that can cause an MCB to trip. Number one, mechanical failure. If it has failed due to wear and tear. Number two, very common, very, very important for you to note and to understand it is a short circuit because that is the main purpose of an MCB, protecting an electrical appliance that could either be damaged. A very important aspect as well is an overload. If the MCB is overloaded, this one is a 16 ampere MCB. If more than 16 amperes in terms of current is drawn from this MCB, that is, of course, AC, it will trip, isn't it? So those are the main reasons. You try to lift it up. You find that, mm, indeed, it is uh, functioning mechanically. If the MCB has failed mechanically, once you try to lift it, it will fall by itself. The next cause of action using the digital multimeter we will go straight to the circuit which is supplied by this MCB. Isolate at this point the, from that connection is a red going to the socket. So first of all, you will have to isolate anything that is connected to that socket, be it a dispenser, be it a charger, you isolate. Once you isolate, you test for continuity between the wire that is on that circuit breaker and the neutral. Why? Because any short circuit or any connection between a neutral and a live will lead to a short circuit. If you test between the neutral and the line, and at that point, remember power is still off, there is a continuity, meaning there are those zeros as well as that beeping sound, it means there is a problem. Between the face and the earth, there should be an open circuit. If there is a short circuit, there is a problem. So you address it. It could be in the socket. It could be in that line from the consumer unit. Inside the conduit or within that power line that is, or within that circuit, there could be a short circuit. All right. So you go and find out where is the problem and then you address it. You have checked the dispenser between the neutral and the ground. You still get a one. You are good to go. So the question will be, what happened? What is the reason why the MCB tripped? This MCB was supplying power to the dispenser. At that point where you are troubleshooting, probably there was a short circuit that happened. And if you don't find it very fast, then it means that uh, it probably might have been inside that dispenser and uh, it was it sorted itself out. Another important thing that you need to do is use a digital multimeter and test for continuity. Continuity will tell you that even with 
that MCB, as long as it is turning up mechanically like so, now you want to troubleshoot and tell, is this MCB really working? You know? So you test at the input and the output, you find that there is continuity. Once you do that, then you are able to tell that indeed this MCB is working mechanically, like you can see, it is turning up and down mechanically. Number two, electrically it is functioning because we can test the continuity, isn't it? So at the off position, we still get a one or infinity, okay? And then when we switch it on or we lift it up and then test, there is that continuity that is uh, going on. So that is how we determine that indeed this MCB is functioning, isn't it? What led to the MCB tripping by the look of things here? We can clearly see that there is a short circuit here between the face and the earth connection, all right? So that is definitely the reason why we can't separate it like that and just leave it like that. First, you can identify that there are extra wires that were left. So that is a red flag number one, also on these. So it means that the installation that was done was poorly executed by the electrician. Was it an amateur? Was it a DIY that did that work? You know, before I connect my cable to that socket, I will use it. And uh, I believe it is a very, very important part of electrical engineering. So I will simply estimate it all the way up to that point and then cut it at this point. All right. We go ahead and uh, connect our ground, the earth connection right there. We find that this ground is protected by the sleeve that I have used. Another mistake that people commit is not tighten the screws. So you just have to tighten the screw. Another mistake that people commit is to wire on the insulation. So that is very wrong. Number one, you don't tighten the screws. Or if you tighten the screw, it is not as per the required standard. Number two mistake that people commit with sockets is definitely screwing on the insulation. It means that you compromise the flow of current, isn't it? So no matter what happens in that switch box or on the wall socket, we have ensured that the cables, the wires are not bare. So chances of short circuiting are very minimal. That is actually the goal of an electrical engineer, an electrician or a DIYer. So even on this other end, you can see this is what I did. So if we are looping to another connection or another socket, so instead of leaving the wires bare like that, top boost normalize using this insulation like that. All right so that we can easily reduce the chances of short circuiting. Color coding should be observed. That's why we have used a yellow shrink tube. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Glado. Thank you so much for joining in. My name is John Gatehi, and uh, this is Top Heights Electricals and Electricians. Thank you so much for the likes. Special thanks to my top bosses who have subscribed to our YouTube channel. <music>